Okay, day 10, meal two. And um, this has been maybe, maybe for me the most interesting in this series because this is the longest that I've gone without eating now in 10 days. That's not the plan. The plan is uh, regularly scheduled three to four hours, let food be our medicine, joyously embracing food as the source of our connection with the flow all around us, all the plant life and uh, everything around us and that is always working with our body, our body working with it as we've discussed um, in this um, constant balance. So our bodies know what to do. They know what to do, trees know what to do, plants know what to do, and with the way that we're eating, we're bringing into our body the nutrients that we actually need and trying to make our best possible decision about this. We're following our instincts for sure. We're, we're watching our impulses. We're feeling our impulses. We're noticing maybe what happens with the thought that goes with that first impulse. Not always the best plan. So here's the thing. It's been seven hours now for me. My first meal of the day was two bowls of the amazing epic soup. And it's so nourishing that it's really carried me. Now we've been busy here. We're working on a, a play like the little bird nest and we have Savannah here and uh, our friend Morgan, Abby and Keeley. We're all working on getting a play together for kids in our program. And uh, we've been just really, really busy. And so it was easy to get into a mode of thinking about this creative process and working on our project. And it's not that I forgot about eating, it's just that I wasn't hungry. And I suppose I could have said to everybody, hey, why don't we all take a break and, and have a snack? But it, it just felt easier to keep going uh, in the flow of what we were doing. Now, there was a moment where I got uh, kind of intensely hungry, almost disoriented, but this time it's different from all the previous times. It's as though something in my body kicked in shortly thereafter when I didn't give it the food that it needed on the regular basis that uh, my body's grown to expect now in these 10 days. Now, what I did real quick and nobody was looking, I ran down to the grocery store where my friends uh, Sven and Gertrude often shop, okay? And I mentioned them before. They're my uh, caveman, cavewoman friends. They're actually 40,000 years old. It's amazing, they're doing amazingly well. They have like cool hairdos, you know, sort of like all kind of dreadlock and everything, but they're very refined and like super sophisticated. You, we think of cavemen and cavewomen sometimes like completely wrong. Sven and Grucher are like, they, they like laugh at us because our ideas about them are so off the mark. Anyways, I asked them about this. I'm like, I'm like so what's up with this? I, I had this intense craving and then it went away. And Sven was like, listen, he goes, he goes, I knew your ancestors. He goes, I used to hunt with your ancestors. And, and Gertrude chimed in. She's like, I hunted with your ancestors too. Because the way that women hunted back in the day was super serious. They hunted what they could hunt because they oftentimes were taking care of babies. Babies make a lot of noise. Children make a lot of noise. Men can't breastfeed. So they're generally not bringing the babies or the younger children with them on the hunt. Babies and small children just scare everything away. Men get really good, we sharpen our spears, we, we march together, we don't use many words, we focus our attention in one direction, and we keep at it and keep at it until we finally bring something back. Now we're hoping to bring back something huge, right? And, uh, and But a lot of times it's, maybe it's like a rabbit and a squirrel. So Gertrude's like, well, we as women are also hunting all day too, but it's more like stuff that doesn't run stuff that's hard to hunt, roots, berries, it's not so easy, you know? So both the culture of men and the culture of women in caveman days, listen to this, our ancestors that delivered to us our genetic makeup, no matter where we are in the world, we have fundamentally caveman, cavewoman genetics at work. They worked hard for their food. There was no like, go through the drive through at McDonald's and just get something real quick. There was like work. They worked for their food. So Sven's like, of course, you're gonna get a little bit hungry, but you know, it's like, what do you do? Whine and cry about it? It's like, you're on the hunt. You're like, you're in a creative process. You're, you've got your spear and you're focused. You're going one direction with your family and your friends. 
And, and Gertrude's like, of course, you know, we get, we get focused, men and women hunting get focused on what they're doing. And our bodies are accustomed to work before we eat, to work before we eat. Our culture now, friend says, my 40,000 year old friend, says, maybe gotten a little soft, maybe gotten a little lazy. It's like, oh gee whiz, I got, I'm a little hungry. You know, I gotta get some, like, some Cheetos. What the heck is Cheetos? It's some kind of thing. It's like this big, it's orange. There's nothing in nature that looks like that. Maybe a carrot, but it's definitely not a carrot. And it's got a bunch of ingredients. I can't even understand when I look at the package just now, because my kids wanted to have some Cheetos for the Super Bowl party. I'm like, okay, what am I gonna do? Am I gonna torture them, make them eat like me? You know, I'll torture them with conversations about Sven and Gertrude, okay, but I'm not gonna try to make them eat the way I'm eating now. I mean, they're, they, they make good choices. They'll, they'll come into their own decision-making about how to eat in the most helpful way. But I looked at the Cheeto bag. I can't understand half of the thing that's on the list of the ingredients. It's, it doesn't grow on a tree, I know that. So anyways, Sven and Gertrude says, We're, we are made to work for our food. Like I'm gonna make a sign that says, we'll work for food. Like can you picture this right here? We'll work for food. I am gonna work for food. Moving forward into our 11th day tomorrow, this is one of the things that we're gonna talk about. And we're gonna not just talk about it, we're going to do a little bit of work each day to give our body something that's important, that's going to be nourishing, that's going to uh, really invite our body to work in greater, more efficient ways for our benefit, which is always how our body always wants to work for us. Always. Trillions and trillions of cells. And when we make sure that we are uh, eating like really good, say, the probiotics, the digestive enzymes that we talked about, we're giving our workers the tools that they need, like hammers and saws to do the work that they need to do. Now, we can't just sit back, I mean, we can just sit back with our feet up, you know, but if you can move a little bit, if you can do this, okay, that's at least something, right? If you can do this, that's something. If you can lift your arms and move, if you can just hold a couple of soup cans in your hand and move them a little bit for a little bit, or if you can hold a couple weights and even just standing there, just bearing weight without moving, just standing there, bearing like a, a something like a, a gallon of water in each hand. So that would be at 16 pounds total. And just holding that is giving your body something to do. We'll talk about this more starting tomorrow. But right now, it's really late in the day. And this is meal number two. And here's, here's what I'm going to do. I did notice that there was a momentary habitual desire to pick up the cheese. Uh, my kids had grilled cheese. To pick up the grilled cheese and eat that. It was just like a habit. And it wasn't even like my body was saying I needed it. This soup that we're on now, I think is pretty amazing. That's what I'm noticing. Anyways, Gertrude said, we invented that back 40,000 years ago. It's kind of like all everybody in the tribe would just add to the soup and you just keep it going make a big clay pot keep the fire going someone's always in charge of the fire and hunting party come out you bring back a couple of squirrels and whatever you could find it would go in bones and all would go right into the soup the vegetables the roots would go right into the soup it'd go into sort of a community soup there's a lot of community effort in caveman days we're made to be in a community. We're made to connect with people. And we are also made to work before we eat. Okay. Giant, epic pile of spinach. Quarter, avocado. And turkey, about the size of the palm of my hand. Meal number two. Day 10, see you in four hours. I'm gonna try to get myself back on the schedule. This was an interesting experiment. I'm doing amazingly well, even though I got way off the schedule. I do wanna use food as my medicine. In medicine, typically, the frequency is important. So medicine where it's every four hours, when a doctor prescribes every four hours, they mean every four hours. If they say um, something like, six times a day, 
Well, that means kind of about every roughly four hours, but give or take a little bit of time here and there, you can sort of make it up as you go. Okay, six times a day, take this six times a day is a very different prescription than every four hours. It sounds like the same thing if you do the math on it. One is more precise than the other. Today, I just kind of changed my own plan because I went to a, eh, six times a day. And I'm doing pretty good, but I'm gonna bring myself back to every four hours so that my body is getting this regular um, base of nutrients. We're gonna add a little bit more work to the equation here. We're gonna build that up a little bit. We're gonna talk a little bit more and practice a little bit more mindfulness-based meditation to help our health and well-being and mindfulness-based yoga, which no big whoop. It's like basically moving and paying attention. There you have it. See you in four hours.